Hello and welcome to the channel Ruckasaurus Rex where we discuss and review all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. We are back after a minute or two we have uh, we've returned and of course we have returned to our late to the party series of Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series action figures and uh, what better way than to uh, spark the return to uh, these reviews than to finally, finally hit you with the uh, very first action figure in this series. Number one himself from uh, Wave One. We're talking about the Zunoceratops, Christopheri. Indeed, he, we have him right there in front of us. You see the packaging in the. Uh, the uh, typical, traditional, historic, if you will, this early in the game, Beast of the Mesozoic Manor, where you can see the figure uh, in the uh, packaging and you see the uh, sleeve there with some nice artwork of the Zunoceratops, looking uh, great. These are 1 18th scale figures. On to the side there, we have the Beast of the Mesozoic uh, logo with the Triceratops as the icon for the Ceratopsian series. On the back, we have that uh, sleeve uh, is showing uh, the artwork on what will be the uh, info card that is included with this and all of the figures in the uh, Ceratopsian series. And the sleeve uh, info reads Zuniceratops Christopheri, which uh, stands for Zuni Horned Face. And uh, the information is uh, the length of the Zunoceratops is up to 3.5 meters or 11 and a half feet long. Uh, location, Marina Hill Formation in New Mexico, USA. The time period, the late Cretaceous, 89 million years ago. Living nearly 10 million years earlier than most Ceratopsians, Zunoceratops is much smaller and more primitive than its descendants. Supporting the theory of a North American origin for ceratopsians, Zunoceratops may be a link between Protoceratopsids and Ceratopsids. Most definitely might be, especially when you consider uh, what it looks like and its size. You could tell that um, it uh, kicked off uh, the Ceratopsians as we uh, have come to know them, even though there were. Uh, species prior to Zuniceratops that were really the uh, ancestors of Ceratopsians, but uh, Zuniceratops definitely looks like the Ceratopsians, the basic uh, design, body style, and everything else of Ceratopsians that we, uh, we've we all come to know. On the uh, top of that sleeve, you see it reads 19 points of articulation, realistic movement, and detailed profile card included, and this is, as I stated, number one in the line. And I've already taken the liberty of uh, cutting away the sleeve, so you can see there on the uh, the back of the packaging. It's sort of a, it's a checklist for everything that's in Wave One, and we're kicked off with Zuniceratops. And uh, they've got some good ones in this first wave: Stracosaurus, uh, Triceratops, uh, Hardus, the subadult, which we've reviewed, Chasmosaurus. We've got the Medusa Ceratops in there, Diabloceratops, Nasutoceratops, and a couple of 1 6 scale figures the uh, Cetacosaurus and the Protoceratops, which they, uh, the Cetacosaurus definitely precedes uh, the Zuniceratops and is the, uh, the uh, ancestor of them all, so to speak. So, yeah, pretty good right there. So we'll get back to the front so you get one last look at the Arzuni in packaging because now he's about to come out. Included with all of the Ceratopsian series are backdrops, all beautiful backdrops, and uh, this is no exception. Very nice. You can use this uh, creatively to uh, pose your uh, action figures uh, with. And here is the aforementioned... Uh, informational card that comes with all of the uh, figures for uh, Beast of the Mesozoic as well. It's got that artwork of the Zuni and on the back of it it's got that same information that I read off earlier also included in this uh, cellophane sleeve are instructions on um, heating up the tails. They come detached from the figure um, in packaging and this uh, shows you, you know, how to heat them up so you can apply and install the tail. 
and uh, it is strong suggested that you do so because you could uh, you could damage your figure and here we are taking a look at our Zuniceratops on a rotating platter and uh, you can see uh, the beauty of the figure it uh, it's actually um, in terms of the coloration one of the uh, one of the uh, darker and uh, less vibrant figures in the line uh, with the exception of the uh, the skull the head sculpt of course and uh, I can't say as colorful as that uh, head sculpt is uh, it uh, does remind me of a uh, critter that I once had. I used to um, I used to keep uh, lizards and other reptiles as pets before, and uh, just going by the uh, the head sculpt and of course the tail on the Zuni Ceratops, it uh, it's uh, got its color inspiration from the blue-tailed skink, and I remembered it. Uh, I remember that uh, that critter well. So uh, of course, as always. With Beast of the Mesozoic, the, uh, the uh, figures get their inspiration from existing reptiles and amphibians uh, as a base. And then, of course, uh, Mr. Silva himself, he, uh, he expands upon that to uh, make, the, uh, make the appearance of the, uh, the species in question uh, unique. And uh, that's no different than what we've got this go-round. So uh, let's get our Zuniceratops off of the platter and uh, we'll uh, see what's what. Please remember to like this video and uh, share it. That'll be great too while you're down there. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Help support the channel. While you guys do that, what I'm going to do is take a uh, quick measurement of our Zuni Ceratops. And uh, from the uh, tip of the beak to the uh, tail, He's coming in at about eight inches. If you were to go with the horns, that puts it at eight and a half. But uh, we're gonna go with the uh, we're gonna go with the beak to the uh, to the tip of the tail. And uh, by those uh, measurements, this is supposed to be uh, one eighteenth scale. So at eight inches, that's representative of a twelve foot long beast. The Zunaceratops are reported to be about 11 and a half feet long, so uh, that's more or less in there, you know, give or take. So that's pretty good in terms of uh, keeping within the scale of the figure. Let's uh, get a close up of that skull and the rest of him. Looking at the uh, skull, some very nice uh, paint apps going on here. You see, uh, it's uh, mostly of a brown motif there. The beak is a uh, brown. It's like a, and it's got a wash over it. And uh, then you have a uh, a uh, basic brown followed by uh, a dark brown striping, like over the uh, the basic brown is is the is the base coat of the of the skull. And then the, you have a dark brown striping as well as some tan, as you can see right there. Uh, the lower jaw dark brown on the beak and then that base is uh, that tan with the dark brown striping the eye yellow and uh, the pupil black and you have some more um, of the uh, some more uh, paint apps there that's like a uh, almost a rust colored brown which is also being uh, displayed there uh, around the uh, just below the eye the cheek area it's kind of bluish around the eye pretty cool looking at the front there the horns the horns a nice uh, a nice almost like a bone color and it's got a, a dry wash on there so that they look weathered that's pretty cool head on looking at the uh, the frills uh, design you see that uh, it's basically um, orange and it's uh, got some uh, red on the interior there of the uh, the design and uh, then it's uh, it goes into like a mango uh, color there and uh, right down the middle the uh, the design which is like a white with some uh, dry brushing over it it comes you see it comes around and then it goes down and then it becomes you've got uh, a black uh, or a bluish I should say uh, kind of um, 
you know, just a brushing over as it catches all of the uh, the scalation that's going down there. So that way it's look it's like it goes between orange and the blue, orange, blue, etc. Pretty nice, the perimeter of the frill, nice blue. Turning there, looking at the back, the back of the frill is uh, nothing, uh, no great shakes there. It's like a, uh, like that brown color, which I believe is the old basis is probably molded in that color for all we know. And then um, you see at the back of the neck, we're talking about it's uh, different. It goes between uh, black striping, and then you got the brown, black, brown. Then you get down to the lower neck, and then you get that uh, like an orange kind of brown color. And then you've got the tan going down there, and uh, the same continues for the uh, upper torso here. And uh, you get down to those uh, four limbs. You've got the brown. It's tan on the back there. Um, it gets tan with the brown dry brushing over brushing of uh, the, the, the we'll call it the fore, the forearm of that uh, forelimb and then of course you've got the uh, the toes nicely painted there looking at the back the lower torso is uh, also striped but um, it's more of that tan and then you've got the uh, um, dark brown but not as, as, as dark as uh, the upper torso is concerned. And uh, then it goes down, you see you've got some more of that brown on the outskirts of the hind limb. It transforms into a lighter, uh, it, it, uh, it, it's like intermediate here between uh, the brown and the tan. You've got like it's tan, but it's got that uh, brown overspray or dry brushing showing the scalation there going down to the uh, the calf of the uh, hind limb you see how that is and then of course when you get to that lower ankle portion there it's uh, you can tell it's um, also uh, that tan colored but it's painted the dark brown and then the uh, hind uh, the feet the toes I don't know if you can see that well enough but the toes are painted uh, like a, a kind of a, a brownish gray color then of course we've got the tail, which is uh, striped there, and this is what the blue-tailed skink uh, motif comes in. Just like the blue-tailed skink, the only difference is the blue-tailed skink's tail is very long, like two times the size of the rest of the body on the skink. And you see, it's the not that's not the case going on here, but it does have the uh, you know tapers off into the blue. You see the striping right there. And uh, yeah, pretty nice. Of course, everything is repeated on the other side. Looking at the underbelly, all light. You've got the uh, dry brushing, so that way the scales pop out. It's got a cloaca. Pretty nice. That tail on the underside has got a lighter kind of blue, like almost a teal color blue there. So uh, pretty nice with our Zenny Ceratops. As far as the uh, articulation is concerned, 19 points. So the, we've got the articulation there, the jaw moves, the head also, there's articulation there. So you can look up independent of the neck slightly and look down and you can turn left and right rotating. And then with that neck, you can get it to look even further up and down. And then of course you can, combination of the head and neck, you can get some nice turns there. That looks pretty good both ways so you've got that the body mid torso you've got articulation there so you can turn it slightly left and right and up and down as far as the forelimbs you've got rotation there at the shoulder right there at the elbow you also have it there at the uh, we'll call it the wrist so you can uh, go up down left right as far as the elbow you can also swivel it as far and also uh, go in and out with there so you have that and of course that's on both sides the hind limb you've got rotation there right there at the hip you also have it there at the uh, the knee you have it there at that uh, we'll call it that first ankle joint there and uh, you get rotation as well you also have articulation at the foot down up and of course you can rotate it and it does pivot so that's great there the tail 
left, right, up, down, and you could swivel it round and round if you so desired. So uh, that is the articulation of our Zuniceratops. Zuniceratops being one of the oldest ceratopsians on record and uh, as well as uh, one of the smallest at only uh, 11 and a half feet long. I figured it only appropriate to uh, to compare it to uh, something uh, in its family tree that's even older than it was and that being the Cetacosaurus. So you got that right there. And now here we have Zuni next to a Protoceratops. Andrews, as a matter of fact, so uh, so you know which uh, species of uh, Protoceratops this is. This is the uh, the smaller species of uh, Protoceratops that we uh, know of. And um, uh, yeah, uh, I just uh, wanted you guys to see uh, how small Ceratops can start it out as. Protoceratops was about uh, closing in on six feet long, like about 5.9, I think it's uh, on average. And as I stated before, as we already know, the Zuni Ceratops is 11 and a half feet long. So you see uh, the differences in scale there. So that gives you an idea that uh, the Ceratopsians were definitely growing. And this comparison shows you how large they got to. We're talking about one of the two largest Ceratopsians right here, the Taurosaurus. So um, it's incredible right there. You see how uh, large the Zuni was compared to the Protoceratops, and now look how large the uh, Taurosaurus is compared to the Zuni as well. So uh, they definitely, uh, we do have a nice uh, fossil record of uh, the evolution of Ceratopsians. Here's a look at our Zuni. Uh, with that beautiful backdrop going on there. They are very nice. And one final shot of our uh, Zonoceratops uh, like, looking like he's uh, ready to defend himself against a, uh, an oncoming predator. So in closing, our Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series Zonoceratops by Creative Beast Studios. For me, another welcome addition. This is my... Uh, coming back to the late to the party celebration of uh, the Ceratopsian series. Definitely uh, a winner here. This is number one in the entire series from wave one. And uh, Zuni Ceratops being one of the uh, smaller Ceratopsians uh, in recorded history, you were able to see uh, demonstrated uh, where it ranked in the size order. It only uh, only size I didn't show was an intermediate size uh, to large, meaning it's something that may have been like about 18 feet long or 20 feet long, but you got the idea when I went from the Protoceratops to the uh, Taurosaurus, and uh, you could see how, uh, how these guys uh, grew over uh, a great length of time. We're talking about uh, like they started back about 101 million years ago all the way to 66. So um, they really did their thing. Uh, they were definitely a very successful uh, genus of dinosaur for sure. Um, definitely uh, interesting and beautiful with their, uh, their uh, dynamic frills and horn ornamentation. And uh, it's demonstrated here. Mr. Silva, David Silva, has definitely devoted himself to accuracy. And uh, especially when it comes to the uh, the head sculpts, that's definitely where it counts, and um, it has paid off. I'm loving the line, loving this figure. So uh, definitely, uh, if you don't have it by now, if you're late like me, uh, you can still get uh, this figure still available at uh, Creative Beasts uh, online. So uh, go there and uh, pick yours up. As far as uh, this review is concerned, we are now complete looking at our Zuni Ceratops for the final time. Please like, share, and subscribe to this uh, channel. Uh, definitely, if you like the video, definitely give that a, uh, a thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. It's good for the algorithm. If you have uh, comments, questions, concerns, critiques, please put them below. And if you want to be notified for the next time I upload a video, please hit that bell down below. So uh, once again, thank you guys. This has been uh, Rexosaurus Rex saying take care.